Hey folks, this is Ketchup Warthog. Welcome to this video in which we rework a guide I made before, covering the flick head-on. I realized that the previous video was not detailed enough, and at that time I didn't have any in-game footage to back it. So with the help of a much better microphone, I hope to clarify it in more detail and help you learn this very neat head-on trick. The flick head-on is a head-on style which allows you to very momentarily break away from incoming enemy fire and snap back to him for a second shot. It's a rather complicated maneuver involving deception, timing, quick reaction, and ironically not so much aim. When viewed from the enemy's perspective, it seems that you're going evasive, tends to suddenly flick back and shoot him for the second time. There are many advantages to this head-on if done properly, which I'll cover in more detail later in this video. But first, let me explain how it's yeah, done. Yeah, you hit me. The first step is to manage your speed. Try to stay within 400 to 450 km per hour, with a minimum of 350 at the moment you start firing the first salvo. If you're good with your aim, it's very likely you'll kill him with this shot, but if not, there's no worries. Head-ons obviously favor higher speeds, and it's much easier to evade the enemy, but do be careful of compressing at high speeds. Let me demonstrate this with a few examples. Here I'm intentionally going head-on at low speeds with Bandit on your 6, a friend of mine. Notice that I'm going way below the 350 km per hour minimum, which causes the flick to become a bit slow. The cursor doesn't quite snap back in time before he got within firing range. And see how vulnerable I am in the snap roll? We'll talk about it later. Here I exacerbate the problem by going a full hundred slower, and going to a climb as well. The cursor snaps back too slowly, and the sound of shells whizzing by is a reminder to stay fast next time. That's not to say it's impossible to do at low speeds, but rather only use it as a last resort if you absolutely need to kill the enemy in that head-on. It's risky. I'll now show what happens when you go too fast, featuring another friend Garak11 from Pro100. At high speeds your control will start to compress, and you won't be able to flick as far away. You will run the risk of getting hit by incoming fire, though in most cases you only get your left wing scratched. And again in this example, one advantage though, is that you won't need intense maneuvering to dodge the attack. No need to snap roll and bleed all your speed, making this an ideal head-on for boom and zoomers. You can see that a good head-on requires planning, not just point and click as those retarded IBU elitists say of arcade. The second step is executing the flick itself, to avoid the incoming fire. This is a modification of your usual snap roll, which involves pressing full elevator up and left or right at everyone with the corresponding rudder depending which direction you want to snap roll. Instead, you only need to press all three control surfaces for a split second, then you must immediately let go. The trick here is to let the mouse pointer remain stationary while the aiming reticle deviates the plane to the side. When you let go of controls, if done properly, the reticle will snap itself right back on the mouse pointer to resume shooting, dodging enemy fire while simultaneously having no change in the mouse pointer aim. Needless to say, this is the hardest part of the flick. Timing is crucial, as pushing the flick too short won't dodge incoming fire, and too long, allowing enemy time to readjust his aim. You will definitely have to do a lot of this in test flights, have trial and error, until you feel confident enough to use it. My approach to practicing this is like dribbling a ball. You don't want to dribble it too hard, else the ball will bounce off, nor too little as it simply won't bounce. I'm using the La 5 as the example, keeping my speed between 300 to 400 km per hour. Then I'm going to gently tap elevator up, and I aim to make it bounce over the mouse pointer, just right at the top of the border edge, but not go over it. Right there. A bit too much, too little, too much, okay, too much, need more, and just keep doing it over and over until you get around there. And I'll do the same for rudder, and I personally prefer right rudder. Just gentle taps, very brief, not too soft, not too hard, and switching left and right, then slowly alternate between up and right, and of course, same for the roll. Once you're good with the up dribble, you should have a feel for the timing, and then try combining all three at once. That's too little, a bit more, 
Looking good. Just a tad bit more. And there we go. That's a flick right there. Just keep practicing the timing until the aim reticle passes the radar on the top right. Also notice how all the flicks I did hadn't bled too much speed, even without web. Just let me pick back some speed. If you're still new to this, I suggest banking no more than 30 degrees to the flick direction before pressing the controls. It makes the flick a bit easier to manage and also moves the aiming reticle horizontally rather than diagonally. Also practice left, though I generally only do flicks to the right because I'm right handed. Once you get consistent smooth nice flicks, then the roll will be optional. You will have to practice this over and over again until you hit that sweet spot in timing. With the hardest part out of the way, now we look at what happens after the flick. You must assess the new situation. Where are you heading? What's the situation? How is the enemy? Quick reaction is critical within the split second window. There are quite many possibilities of the situation, but I'll break it down into three main scenarios. Ideal, advantaged, and equalized position. In the ideal situation, as shown in this example, the enemy gets taken out by the first salvo. All you have to do is dodge any possible stray bullets, or even the wreckage itself. There's no need for fancy evasion or snap roll. Simply pitch up or do another flick to conserve speed and prepare for the next target. The second scenario is when the enemy survives but is sufficiently far enough for a snapshot. You're in the advantaged position, having the element of surprise and ready to shoot him again while he is still aimed towards your previous position. I'll show an example using footage from my old montage, so I apologize for the lack of audio and poor quality. I completely missed the first salvo, but notice how I skid just past the tracers with my flick. Following step 1 and 2, I now see a chance to re-engage him as he continues to shoot at where I was, not where I am. I continue to fire, taking him by surprise as he readjusts his aim, evident by the smoke trail and his wings being banked. He started firing again, but it was too late as I was already initiating an evasive snap roll, and the shells flew right on target. You may have noticed that after the flick, I move my mouse pointer slightly to the left and readjust aim. This is to counter my flick causing a deviation to the right. I'll use a diagram to explain. Here's a top down view replicating what just happened. Please pay attention to the bottom right index as well. We start off assuming both planes are going directly head to head, traveling along the horizontal dashed lines. When you execute the flick, the mouse pointer stays in the same position aimed at the enemy, while the aircraft's nose and aim reticle deviates to the right. Notice that your plane is no longer at the same horizontal line in which the enemy is still traveling on, who is surprised and not ready to react yet. As your aim reticle starts to snap back, you can see that the mouse pointer is now directly on the enemy. However, if you want to hit him, you need to lead in front of him, thus moving the pointer and the reticle to the left. This is something you will need experience and practice as well. Note that by moving sideways, you are actually initiating a mini mirage, pretending not to be aimed at the enemy just to turn back at the last second. When the enemy finally responds to your flick, he will be doing a mini mirage as well. So your second burst is in fact a counter mirage. I won't go into detail as this is not too relevant to the flick head on, but having both mirage counter mirage experience will certainly help you. All of this happened within such a short time frame, you will hardly notice it at all. With the flick head on, count those extra skills you gain as additional bonus. The third and final position is when the enemy decides to go evasive and doesn't commit the head on. This is rare, but you should exploit it when it shows up. Here my BF-109 is going head on with a Spitfire 2B. Notice how easy it is after the flick to track his evasion and score a hit. And since I'm not defensive, I can turn very tightly to get on his 6. This counter evasion will be covered later in this video. Now before you go flicking your plane all over the place, make sure you have sufficiently tested your planes in test flights as each plane has different flight models and reacts differently to the flick. Some planes are too snappy, others can be too sluggish to even make it. While it may be obvious that planes like P-38 won't do well, as you see me getting wrecked here, you might be surprised with certain planes and even boom and zoomers like the P-47, which actually flicks pretty well at high speeds. These boom and zoomers benefit greatly from the flick 
when energy conservation in a head-on is paramount, or when needing to finish an enemy rather than entering a turn. The key criteria for planes that can perform this is having good roll rate, decent rudder, and workable elevator, ranked accordingly to each criteria's importance. It's up to you to decide which planes it could work on. The flick is usable to varying degrees for just about most single-seat fighters I can think of, but the more maneuverable ones are generally better. Planes like the Ki-44, Ki-61, Spitfires, BF-109s, etc. can definitely do well, but I'll shortlist it down to three planes that has favorable armament and battle ratings. The J2M2 and I-185 are very capable planes, with strong engine, high speed, and very powerful armament. However, the J2M2's cannons are wing-mounted and low rate of fire, which can hinder head-on, while the I-185 is a bit too snappy in the roll and rudder, making it hard to control for starters to the flick. It does have three central eye cannons, which gives the 4.0 BR. Both planes have flight models reminiscent to the old Focke 190 Antons, being, or was, for the 190s, one of the best flickers in game. The best plane in my experience would have to be, you guessed it, my beloved La 5 or 7 series. Two nose mounted 20mm box in close proximity, good fire rate and ample ammo supply of 170 rounds per gun, very well balanced control on all axes, very stable platform in shooting or intensive maneuvering and a seal clubbing 3.3 BR. Call it Russian bias, I love them to bits. This pretty much covers all you need to know in the flick head-on. The rest of this video will showcase examples of the uses in different situations. I'll show them in real time, with or without cuts, or in slow motion replay for explanations. The flick isn't always an offensive maneuver. It can be used defensively as well. I mentioned earlier that going into a snap roll can be risky and leaves you at a vulnerable spot, so I'll show you how you can delay it with a flick. Here my BF-110 is going head on with an HE-112. The 110 is horrible at snap rolling due to the weak elevator and roll rate, but has surprisingly good rudder. After my shot, I flick to the right to avoid incoming fire, then flick left with elevators down as he gets destroyed in the head on. If I had used the snap roll immediately, his wreck, still flyable and shootable, could come straight at me, risking damage or more. You can see alternating flicks in rapid succession works very well in the head-on evasions. This hurricane will do a very clever mirage at extremely close range. I simply had to evade him. However, if I snap roll at such close distance, I risk taking even more fire or even collision. I also need to extend since he is slower but more maneuverable. And so I flick to the right, dodged him, and conserve my energy. I'll now show what to do when you want to avoid low speed head-ons. Bandit is coming from a higher energy state, and if I snap roll in the vertical head-on, I'll be sitting duck. I can't flick if I'm going too slow, so I go into a shallow dive without web, as I'll need it for the climb. Once I'm above 470 and he's close, I'll gently nose up into a mirage for the head-on. I had just enough speed for the flick, and didn't need the energy costing snap roll to evade. Also notice if Bandit commits to a turn fight, I can easily reverse the situation, but of course he's a good pilot and extends away. This is also my favorite tactic against potential climbers, tricking him into thinking I'm diving away, just to zoom back up and take them by surprise. It's ironic that the flick head-on is also good counter evasion. When you're in the advantage position, you can hit the enemy no matter what he does next. The Griffin Spitfire's powerful rudder allows me to flick and very quickly put some shots into the Corsair. If it weren't for the sparks, he would have been dead. This replay will show what happens when you snap roll against a flick head on. He tried to evade after firing, but since I didn't snap roll, I could easily follow his split S and prepare myself for some very salty message. Hmm. You can see how devastating the flick can be if done properly, giving him no chance to fight back. The only counter to the flick I could think of is by being the first to flick. I've only encountered a flick against me once, but since I was the faster one, I took no damage and scored a hit. The flick is incredibly useful for weapons that requires you to get close to be effective. This includes planes with wing mounted convergence found on many US and British fighters, low muzzle velocity like the MGFF cannons, or simply weak hitting powers with machine gun only planes. Not only that, 
You won't need pinpoint accuracy marksmanship to hit the target at very long ranges if you're not experienced yet. I've set up a custom battle against AI pilots. Around update 1.6.7 or so, AI fighters will go head-on in the first pass, firing from at least 1.6 kilometers, ideal for practicing head-ons. The bf 109 e 4 has MGFF with very low muzzle velocity, wing mounted and thus convergence reliant, and has to be close range to be effective. By the time I return from the flick, I'm well within convergence, and the Meningishaw surrounds made no mistake. Notice also that a second flick allows me to very quickly engage the Yak-9T. Flicks are very useful when you need to do multiple head-ons and switch targets. Here I have an unspaded Spitfire 2B. The cannon has very few ammo, recalls all over the place, and without the gun upgrades, spread like a shotgun, and tends to jam even with short bursts. I had a convergence of only 400 meters, and trying to shoot long range head-on would be wasteful. Want to kill him? No problem, the flick will do. I scored only a hit at long range, but once he went within my convergence, he was shredded. And again in a spit, where I had the gun upgrade, but I didn't want to waste all my ammo in case I need to turn around and finish him off. What do I do? Flick head on. I'll show one more example, where the weapons are simply bad for long range. The 12.7mm Berezine UB is known to be rather ineffective, and the MiG 315BK compounds the problem by having two of three mounted separately under wing pots. But who cares at 500 meters? One last thing, you may notice that the flick allows you to finish off the enemy in the event your first head-on was unsuccessful. This becomes even more crucial if you know getting into a prolonged turn fight may leave you in a vulnerable position. I'm diving to pretty low altitudes quite close to the enemy spawn. While I'm sure I can energy fight him to death, more enemy fighters are coming to help him. So I made sure to finish him in one pass, then zoom climb and reset for the next attack. So, to summarize the flick head-on, there are three simple steps. Manage your speed around 400 to 450 km per hour and fire your shot. Do the split second flick and let go for the return. Assess the situation, whether you're in the ideal, equalize or advantage positions. You can use it in head-ons for evasion as to delay the snap roll, counter the enemy's own evasion, reduce the distance for when you or your weapons need to get close, and obviously to finish him. Practice every plane in test flights before you attempt this in battle, and you will devastate the enemy, regardless of the plane you're flying. To conclude this guide, this is a very nice head-on trick, giving you the upper hand in a head-to-head -head engagement, and can be very devastating if done right. Mastery of input controls, mastery of your plane, mastery of quick snapshots or mirage all comes in the package to help you make very satisfying head-on kills. Beware. You might receive salty messages from your victims calling you a hacker. These size effects will make you even better pilot, as I unintentionally found out myself. I have seen only few top players use it, like Flip from Pro 100 for example, but it is known to be the signature move of Yolo Gook. I highly suggest you to check out his videos which shows prominent use of the flick head-on, and I've linked his channel down in the description below. I'm aware this is a very long video, and I apologize if I may have bored you. It's the first time I've seen anywhere, so I want to be as detailed as possible. I put a lot of time and effort into this, and hope you are satisfied with the outcome. Now for the channel update. I have it down in the description as well, but I'll say it again quickly. I'm retiring from War Thunder, moving on to other games like DCS World, which means after the next video, this channel won't have any more War Thunder related content. After that, if you're here only for War Thunder, I suggest unsubbing by next week. It's been a long journey. I hope you enjoyed the past content I uploaded. The short guides, montages, and even those, sh you know, uh, shitty little posts. Hope you gained something from the channel into your arcade experience. This is Ketchup Warthog. Good luck, stay safe, and be it in War Thunder or DCS, good hunting. It's been a pleasure.